All right, so um, conversion experiences, there are a lot of different types. And the next thing, the next issue, and we will talk about this later on, especially when we get to Buddhism, that the neurological um, pathways that the West studies is really, um, they a lot of people in the West have been studying Zen Buddhism and, and Zen and the brain, somebody wrote an 800 page book about it. There really is, it's intended, all these old techniques are intended to get to that old brain or reptilian brain or whatever you wanna call it. It's close to the brain stem. It's the source of these very aggressive, primitive drives. And so all these, all this stuff was structured to try and get that energy to get channeled in a way that would not, that would get people to get along and then be stable and then be able to work toward higher and higher levels of quality interaction, intellectual inquiry, um, industrial development, creativity, all the stuff, you know, the higher order stuff. Um, Catholic Benedictine tradition has a contemplative branch. Catholic church has a contemplative branch. Um, all right, what is stress? Here's a question. What is stress? Do you think, and I'm gonna, you have to answer what you think. So here's all the questions. Is it a serious social problem? Well, we talked about it earlier, right? Stress, does it impact our lives? Why do we experience it? Is the cause the responsibilities we have and the threat of survival? Or is it all in our heads? Is it natural or cultural? Okay, so when you live in the culture of the US, are you getting set up to get stress? because of the values, you know, what you're taught is important and then what it takes to achieve that. And then you're given sort of impossible, um, you can't please everybody. And so you're, you end up stressed just because of cultural expectations, all right? So if you think of Hindu and Bo Hinduism, Buddhism, developed, these people developed these patterns of inner strength when they really did have to worry about surviving, right? Illness, their teeth are falling out, right? Children die in childbirth. I mean, they, like they faced a whole lot of stuff and they, they managed, right, to just maintain their composure, right? What about you? Do you experience stress about doing well in school? How well is well enough, right? Do you focus on what you learned or what grade you received? Um, what you learned is not competitive. The grade is competitive. What you learned is something you can control. The grade you receive is not entirely under your control. So are you set up for stress, right? And your relationships with family, are you concerned about your public image, your Facebook, you know, brand, or about the quality of the interaction, right? Um, Western society focuses on personal achievement, and it's measured by statistics and degrees and income, and that's your identity. So we have evaluations at the end of the semester. Um, you know, like what do they evaluate? How much should uh, the faculty's egos get caught up in it? They should be able to be responsive if students are learning, but are those really good tools to measure what they're learning? Is it the faculty member's fault that they didn't, uh, you know, do their job or is it the student wasn't putting effort? I mean, it just, once you take it off of just teachers conscientiously teaching and students trying to learn, 
and put it on a bunch of rubrics. Um, I think you somehow miss the point or it can go bad, it can go south pretty easily. Um, is your desire to gain a career in public recognition? Is this a power struggle with your parents or is it trying to please your parents? Um, do you feel pressured to be the perfect whatever? Um, if so, does that cause stress, right? Uh, when your source of identity is caught up in things you can't control, then you'll have anxiety and stress. And that would be why Muller would say India provides a corrective. All right, so, so each of you do, you, do you experience stress? And do you think it's culturally constructed or it's natural? Or what do you think of it when you reflect on it? Jack? I definitely have stress when I take like a big test or something. Um, I think um, different people put different levels of stress on themselves to perform and that causes anxiety. But I think, I think stress can be a good thing. I think some cultures have more stressful environments that is not good for, for, I don't know, good for development to have that much stress. Are there any signs in our society that people are under too much stress? Um, yeah, I mean, um, suicide rates are pretty high. What rates? Suicide. Yeah, that's true. Like they feel like they don't have a way out of the work culture. Okay. I think it's pretty high in Japan. Yeah. Yeah, because of the expectations, right? Mm. Um, what about you, Melanie? Do you think uh, stress is natural or cultural? And is it good or bad? Well, I think that if you live, you're going to have stress no matter what. Um, just internalized stress, like we were talking earlier, no, you know, am I going to die early? Am I going to get hurt? Things like that. Um, but I think stress is also very much caused by culture, especially in American society. Like we just have so many standards that we have to live up to. And also like we depend on other people and other people depend on us. And individually, you never know what another person is going to do or who you can trust. And I mean, I think that causes a lot of stress. But like, for example, comparing like the UK and America um, culturally, like I know in the UK, you can kind of be whoever you want. Like they don't care about race and um, gender roles and things like that as much over there. But here, you know, we get the stress of, well, what can we wear that's going to make us fit in? What do we have to look like? you know, who do we have to like, things like that. Okay, so yeah, there's also, you know, in Europe, it gets demonized like the moral abyss of Europe because of those secular humanists, right? Uh, well, actually they have six weeks paid vacation every year. <laughs> Would that help with your stress level? <laughs> Yes. <laughs> uh, when women give birth, they get all, I don't know, six months. In Germany, you get two years paid vacation because they want you to take care of your kid. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's also a great example of how Americans are way more stressed. I mean, they have to be. Well, there's health care, right? In Europe, they have basic health care and if you have your little e, EU card, you can go to any country in Europe and get healthcare, just walk in with your card. I know, cause I got sick when I was in Austria and I paid 40 euro, but you know, people were in there, they had their little card and 
yeah, that's that dang secular humanism, you know. Um, so I think I think a lot of it is is uh, culture that you have all these expectations and you don't have a, as many safety nets. And but you have this rhetoric of individual rights, right? You have a right to a job, but you don't have a right to health care. And you should save your money so that you can take care of your health. Just get a better job. Or you don't have a right to have your kid in, in preschool or a decent public education. But hey, if you make more money, you can move to a neighborhood, there's a better school, right? It's, it just seems to me like you're getting set up. And then somebody else makes a whole lot of money. <laughs> giving you drugs, you know, to deal with your stress and your depression and all that stuff. Uh, does that make sense to you all? But yeah. We treat, in a capitalist system, people get treated like commodities, something to make money off of, you know, and they suffer. Um, all right, so stress, is some combination of natural and cultural. Next thing, what do you really want in life, right? How does lion fit with what you want, right? So um, there are different paths. When people really say, you know, I really want pleasure. The Hindu, have you ever heard of tantric sex? Okay, sex ed in Dr. Beck's class. Uh, tantric sex are, is all these techniques to be able to have a very, very prolonged orgasm, right? So it's very, very pleasant. It's also not violent, right? Um, it's not aggressive. But if you decide the path is pleasure, they have a lot of techniques. <laughs> for how to give you pleasure, all right? Path of success, all right? And um, I mean, the, the trouble, I mean, plenty of people can, the standard thing is nobody on their deathbed wishes they'd spent more time at the office, you know? And there's a lot of people who think, you know, success is the number one thing, and then they get toward the end of their life, and they realize that they don't have good relationships with people. Um, there's other things in life that they missed out on. And so, but some people just never get past that, right? Success, that's it. They die having worked at the law firm or the office 80 hours a week and then they they drop <laughs> okay then there's renunciation uh the drive for meaning and purpose right so what religion is is just a drive for meaning and purpose beyond self-interest um then you have the path of duty and this is where bill gates is trying to to get us he wrote some books, Getting Us to Zero Carbon, How to Avoid a Climate Disaster. And it's pretty depressing, the level of change that we would have to have to get some reasonable, in some reasonable position. But that's what he's working on right now. And to me, that's a com combination of duty and also um, trying to make the world a better place, obviously, and pass on something better to the next generation. Um, but at a certain point, for a lot of people, if that gets too frustrating. Um, you can set up your foundation and let other people run it and just say, you know, I want to actually get some peace, right? Inner peace. I want to work on getting in touch with myself. I've been so focused elsewhere uh, my whole life. So that's a spiritual crisis, turning around to the, um, so this is what all the exercises 
are about and all the images and all the stuff that looks kind of weird to us. It's all about getting in touch with your Atman. Um, four paths to the infinite within. And so next time, so um, uh, Alex and my, Mia, Maya. So for next time, we're going to start, I'm going to ask you, what path would you say you're on? What path of life? And then if you're on the path to God, what path to God makes most sense to you? Would it be knowledge, love? Um, and the, I think it's very interesting that you have to apologize for personifying God. Whereas in the Judeo-Christian and Muslim tradition, that's a part of the orthodoxy. Of course, God is a person personified god create you know is the we are the sons of abraham and god has a special plan for us in history and blah 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 right but in the hindu like that's one branch on the path of love it was one way of envisioning god but it's not the only one those are three different paths muslim christian and jewish and then there's other ones too but you know so they disagree quite a bit on that. Then there's the incarnations. Uh, Jesus was one incarnation of Vishnu. Buddha was one incarnation. Um, and then the psychological exercises for it. Four stages of life. These are the things that we will talk about next time. Um, I'll talk about the Myers-Briggs test next time. And then I will also talk about Gandhi, and I will read you a story about Gandhi, and then you need to read this article by Thomas Merton. I think it's about 12 pages, um, and then there's some outlines there too, okay? Any questions? All right, well, I'll see you on Tuesday then. Bye-bye.